Hi there, my name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online and today we are going to work on our core. The core is responsible for keeping us upright, for keeping us like standing up straight, having good posture, but also guess what, when you're transverse, when your deep core muscles are nice and strong, they can also reduce up to 40% of the pressure off of your low back, which if you're anything like me, I have a herniated disc in my low back, I have low back pain, sci um, sciatica, sometimes some um, arthritis. I have arthritis building up in my right hip. This is the key to helping to maintain my mobility in as pain-free of a fashion as possible. So let's get started. We are going to get started on our mats in child's pose. Heels together. Let's go ahead and do knees together as well. That's going to be a little bit more of a low back stretch. Bring your hands to the mat and actively try to pull those hands like you're trying to bring the mat closer to you. You're going to feel your shoulders engage sliding away from your ears. If you want to, you can rest your forehead on the ground, slightly tucking the chin. It should feel like a good stretch in that low back. I mean, excuse me, in the neck area. Pull the shoulders down and away from the ears to activate some of the lower trap muscles, which are key to helping to reduce some stress on the upper traps. That's along your shoulders. Now we're going to walk those fingers forward, coming up through maybe a bit of a back bend to do your tabletop. Hands directly under your shoulders, knees directly under your hips. Let's make sure we know what a neutral spine is. So when we drop our belly looking up, that is not a neutral spine, right? We've got a bit of a back bend here. But when you tilt that tailbone down and then scoop that pelvis forward, we create that cat back. This is also not neutral spine. So where your back is straight, where your pelvis is shooting straight back or straight forward, that is neutral spine. That's what we want to keep during our entire yoga practice. Oftentimes, if you're sway back like me, you think that this is neutral, which is where your tailbone's almost like it's shooting up. That is not neutral. It might feel that way, but that's actually crunchy in the low back. So keep this neutral position in your tailbone and in your pelvis as you plug the toes in and come into your very first downward facing dog. Now, if your heels don't touch the mat today, that's okay. They may end up touching by the end of class. It doesn't really matter. What, you're, what you look like today is not a representation of what you will look like in 10 years, right, with the practice. So keep the belly in. Pull the shoulders down and away from the ears. And we are just going to stretch things out. So if you want to bend and straighten one leg at a time, you could go for that. You could press the chest towards the thighs a little bit more if you'd like. Or you can kind of round things up to engage the core. Just warming up your body. And if you notice, I have two heaters with me today because I'm freaking freezing. I hate the winter time. Go ahead, pick that right foot up, bend that right knee, reach that right heel for your left underarm. Feel a great stretch along the right side body, even into the right quad, hip flexor. It should feel pretty good. Set it down. And now we're going to pick up that left foot. Bend that left knee. Reach that left heel for your right shoulder. Try to keep those shoulders square. Hey there. I really can't see my screen from here, but thank you for tuning in. Screw, straighten that left leg. Coming back to your downward facing dog. Now let's go ahead and roll ourselves out to a high plank position. Hello, core. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my feet a little bit wider than hips width distance. That's a slightly different plank position. Keep that neutral tailbone, that neutral spine. For me, it feels like I'm super scooping to make it be neutral. So play with that where your belly is engaged and your pelvis is neither spilling the soup forward or trying to spill it out backward. Holding this plank the whole time because planks are awesome. Now we're going to roll over to the right side, doing a right side plank. Remember, your right knee is always available to you if you'd like. That helps to hold the integrity of the posture without putting quite so much pressure on the core and the shoulders. Pressing the ground away from you, reaching that left hand up. If it feels okay in the neck, gaze towards the left fingertips. If it doesn't, you can look down. Three, soften that right elbow. Two, one, coming back to plank because we love it. 
yoga inspired fitness, right? And let's go over to the left side. Again, the right hand's reaching up. If you can look up to that left hand, that's cool. But if it's wonky on the neck, don't worry about it. That left knee is always an option. It's better to use the left knee and protect the shoulder girdle than to collapse into that left shoulder and feel the pain tomorrow. Soften that left elbow ever so slightly. That recruits the biceps and triceps a little bit more. And now let's go back to plank. You starting to get warm yet? I hope. Now we're going to bend the knees and hover them off the mat just a little bit. So it's like this, oh, sort of saggy plank. Go back to plank. Bend the knees, plank, bend the knees, plank, three, that was four, last one, hold those knees down for three, two, one, going back to your downward facing dog, good job, let's come up off of those hands for just a moment, bring that right foot forward, left heel plants, coming into your very first warrior one, I'm going to keep my hands down here at my hips to try to make sure that my pelvis is neutral. Often in this warrior one, the tailbone likes to go out, which crunches in the low back. And especially if you're dealing with sciatica, anytime you're um, creating less blood flow down into your hips, that's gonna make things a little worse. So keep that tailbone down. Make sure that you can have good openness here, even in the tailbone. Hands to your heart center. And now we're gonna play with balancing here. Keep your belly in, and we're just going to kick off with that right knee. Bring that left knee into your chest and squeeze it in for five, four, three, two, one. Shift that left foot back with control. Go back to your warrior one. Here is a dynamic, so we're working our right glute as it's stabilizing us, holding us up, and we're working our core as we bring up that left knee. Let's do it again. Inhale, lift that left knee up. See how close you can hold that left knee into your chest for five, four, three, two, one. Shift it back through airplane pose. Set it down. That was two. We're going to do this a couple more times. Big step up. Bring that left knee into your chest. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Shifting it back through airplane pose. Setting it down. Warrior one. Let's do it two more times. Inhale, kick off. Bring that left knee into your chest for five, four, three, two, one. Shift it back through airplane. Set it down, warrior one. This time we're going to hold that left knee up, and then we're going to play with some core work, bringing the knee into your chest. Inhale, kicking off. Lift that left knee up for five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to bring the hands up, drop the toes to tap all the way up for five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Bring your hands back to your heart center. This will help you to balance. Shifting through airplane pose. Now, if you've got a wall in front of you, go ahead and grab it for stability. What we're going to try to do is bring your knee in towards your chest in this airplane pose, focusing on the glutes and the core for five, four, three, two, and one, set it down, that left foot down at the back of the mat, coming back to your warrior one. This glute should be talking to you. Plant the hands to give that right glute a break, coming to your plank. Holding this plank for five, four, three, two, one. Push yourself forward, holding your low plank for five, four. Knees are always an option. Three, two, one. Pushing up high plank, going back to that downward facing dog. We get to do that again on the other side. So ground down that right heel, pick up that left knee, pressing it forward, coming into your warrior one on the left. Now you're going to notice your balance is different every single day and on every side. So good thing we only have two sides instead of eight. We're going to try this again. Hands to your heart center might help you to create a more stable base because all of your body parts are in, right? On your next inhale, bring your right knee into your chest. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Shifting it back, airplane pose, setting it down, warrior one. That was one. Let's do it again. Inhale, kicking off. Bring that right knee into your chest. Hold it up here for five, four, three, two, one. My Fitbit's telling me to step up. 
clearly it does not know that I'm working and doing yoga. Plant that right foot down at the back of the mat. Let's do that three more times. Inhaling, bring that right foot up. Use your left glute to create the stability that you need for this balance as you bring your right knee into your chest. Using your hands are okay. One more breath. Bringing that right leg back through airplane, setting it down, warrior one. We get to do it two more times. Inhale, kicking off, right knee into your chest. Who would have thought this small movement would make your heart rate go up so high? One more, shifting that right leg back, coming back into warrior one. Last one, we've got those little dips, if you will. Inhale, kicking off, bring that right knee into your chest. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, one. Little toe taps for five, up, four, up, three, all the way up to see how high you can bring that knee. Last one, hold it up. Now we're going to transition through to your airplane pose. Remember, if you want to bring your hands to the wall to hold on to it for stability, that's totally okay. Hands to your heart center might help you to have that balance. Let's do five little crunches, knee to your chest for five, out, four, three, two, and one awesome job set that right foot down at the back of the mat coming back to your warrior one and then planting your hands moving through to your high plank because we love the planks for five four three two one let's come down to our forearms for five four three two one now we're going to bring that right knee down to the ground right heel goes out towards the right here we are on a side plank on our right forearm. We're going to pick that left hand up. You can plug the toes into the ground if you like or the tops of the feet. Picking up that left foot here, holding it for five, four, three, two, one. Bring the knee to the elbow for five, four, three, two, and one. Now this is going to be the fun part. If you want, you can keep that right knee down or you can bring that right foot up. We're going to leave the left foot up, bringing the right foot up. What does that mean? Coming to your full side plank with the left foot up or not. I'm going to do it with my right knee down. So we're going to touch that right hip down, come up. For There's four, three, squeeze that right butt cheek, two, last one. Hold it here and squeeze, five, four, three, two, one, bend that left knee, set that left foot on top of the right foot. Now we're going to bring our hands to our hips. Make sure the left hip is shooting straight up. L bring those knees together. Then we're going to clamshell them open for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Nice. Bring that left forearm down to the ground. Here we are on our plank, on our knees. If you're feeling really froggy, you can come up to your toes, holding it here for five, four, three, two, one. Left knee plant, left foot slides over towards the left. As we come into our side plank on the left, we're going to try to pick up that right foot. We had to do it on the other side. That means we have to do it this side too. So let's do our little crunches. Knee to elbow for five, four, Three, two, one. Nice. Hold me here. Oh, now we've got the option. We can come to that full side plank and do hip dips from here. Or you can keep that left knee on the ground. That's what I'm going to do. Right foot up in the air. Dip it down for five, four, three, two, one. Holding it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Planting that right wrist down, right forearm, right toe, holding this plank. Five, four, three, two, one. Now come to your dolphin pose. So your forearms are on the mat. If you can, leave your, your hands and your shoulders, I mean your elbows, shoulders width distance apart. If your hands start to come together, that's okay. Now we're going to make this be core work. So now we're working shoulders and core. The closer your feet are to your elbows, 
the harder this is. So further away, the less intense this is. I'm going to be kind of in downward facing dog legs. Going to pick up my left foot. Now I'm going to bring that left knee towards my left shoulder for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Shoot it back. We get to do that on the other side. Pick up that right foot. Bring it to your right underarm for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Bring both knees down to the mat. Extend those arms out long. Here we are in a nice child's pose. Catch your breath for just a few seconds before we roll over to our backs. Fun stuff, right? Okay, so what we're going to try to do now is a little bit more traditional type of ab work, as if that wasn't. Let me remove the, the microphone. So in yoga, we always do boat pose, right? So boat pose number one, your feet are flat on the mat. Knees are about hips width distance apart. Hands are outstretched, but they're not like hanging out loosey-goosey. They're kind of right here, close into your body, a little bit more so, right? So what we're going to practice is maybe bringing one foot or both feet off of the mat. If you're ready, extend your legs out long. I'm going to leave my knees bent ever so slightly. So here is a modification of boat. Straight leg is boat. Holding it here for five, four, three, two, one. One. Now we're going to do some boat bicycles, maybe boat sickles. Hmm. So left leg out, right leg out. And if you notice, I'm moving my arms opposite the legs. I think that was three. Here's four. Here's five. Now hold your knees into your chest. Now we're going to start to incorporate the upper abs with the lower abs. If at any point this is too hard, bring your feet back down to the mat or have one leg on the mat, alternating it, okay? So coming back to your boat, I'm going to have bent legs. So instead of just a twist with our hands close to our knees, we're going to pretend that we're trying to grab something overhead and to the side. So as we reach our hands towards the right, up and overhead, we're going to extend that left leg out. Bring everything together. Extend those arms out towards the left, right leg out, bring it back in. Now let's see if we can do that another nine times. You ready? So left leg out, arms reach out right. Now right leg, left arms. That's one. Here's two. Here's three. Now here's four. The farther we reach, the more those upper cores have to work. There's five. Four. That's three two, and one. Whew. Holy moly, that takes bicycling up to a whole new level. Cross that right foot over the left. Squeeze both of those knees into your chest, letting go with your hands if you can, holding it here for five, four, three, two, one. Now touch the toes, bring them back up for five, four, three, two, one. Uncrossing the legs. See if you can hold those knees into your chest without your hands and without them being crossed. For five, four, three, two, one. Cross that left foot over the right. Squeeze those knees into your chest. Five little toe touches for five, four, three, two, one. Goodness gracious, give them a squeeze. Go ahead, ground down those feet. We're going to come all the way down to the mat. Channel a little bit of Pilates. Shout out to our Pilates teacher, Stephanie. She's currently on vacation, but she's going to be back. And Missy's subbing for her this week inside the studio. So if you can make it, I highly recommend it. This is awesome core work. So get your back flat on the mat. We're going to keep that left leg on the ground, that left foot on the ground. We're going to extend that right leg out. And let's just do eight little lifts for that right leg, but you never let the back off the mat. So let that, left, that right leg hover. Bring it up. There's one. Two, press that low back in the mat. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right foot comes to the ground, left leg extends up. We get to do that on the other side. Keep that low back on the mat the whole time for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You probably guessed what's next. Let's see if we can do both legs. Now, you can keep your knees bent and raise and lower the knees like that. The only thing you don't want to do is let the ground come between yourself and your low, your, the ground and the low back. No space here in that little, that little place right here. That tells me that your back is doing the work, not your belly. So keep the tailbone down. Low back is flat on the mat. The legs are as straight as you can manage. Now, as soon as the low back starts to come off the mat, that's as far down as you go. So you may not be able to move very far, which is totally okay. Arms out wide to a T seems, seems to help me. So I'm going to straighten my legs as much as I can, and then I'm going to lower until my low back starts to come off the mat. Then I'm going to bring it up. There was one, two, maybe Charlie Chapman, your feet, three, that seems to help me, four, Five. Let's do five more. Four. Three. Actually, I think this would be three. Let's do two more just because I can't count. One and two. Beautiful. Bring your knees into your chest. We're coming up to the very, very, very last exercise. Roll yourself up. Plant your feet down. So I've been doing these. My, my chiropractor called them sit downs. This was his test for true transverse abdominal strength. So your feet are planted just like we were in boat. Your hands are outstretched if you want to intensify it. Hands to your heart center if you want to make it a little easier. Notice that my back is flat. We don't want to round here. We're going to come down to about 60 degree angle. So 90 degrees is when you've got that right angle. We're going to go between 45 and 60. 45 60. Don't let those toes come off. Here was three. We're going to try to go for 20. Here's four, five. Keep your back straight. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We just got eight more. Thirteen. Keep your back straight. Fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, last two, 19, and 20. Go ahead, give yourself a squeeze. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this got your heart rate up just a little bit and that you had some fun and maybe I hope your core was challenged in a way that you probably or maybe hadn't tried before. That is always the goal here inside Thrive Online. We love to use the traditional yoga theories and practices and kind of juice them up with some of the Western strength building practices. Those are, that's kind of like the ultimate of my jam. And I hope you got to experience a little bit of that and you got to have some fun. Definitely leave me some comments. Let me know what you thought. And if you loved it, go ahead and check us out at thriveyogaandwellness.com forward slash thrive dash online. I would love to invite you into the community where you can work out with me every single week live. You can have a camera. Normally I have another iPad closer where I can see everything, but I didn't do that today because there was no cameras. I didn't think about the comments that you guys might be leading for me, and I apologize for that. But go ahead. Let me know other things you'd like to work on. Tell me what you liked about this really quick workout. Just any sort of feedback you have for me would be awesome. And yeah, I can't wait to see you soon. I will put a link to this video that's up in YouTube as well. So if you didn't know, we have a YouTube channel. So make sure you like and subscribe over there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.